When it comes to discussing speed records for steam locomotives, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Don't tell me. Let me guess. This. Well, under most circumstances, you're hitting the nail on the head. Mallard the Gresley A4 Pacific, famous for setting a speed record of 126 miles per hour. Now, technically, it was 125.88, and Sir Nigel Gresley can confirm that. But because people like to round their decimals, we'll put that number aside. So many of us know that the A4 has an 80 year record of being the world's fastest steam locomotive and remains untouched to this day. But, like everything, there's controversy. And with the Mallard in particular, there always has been, even after her ticket to fame. A lot of rail fans will either agree or disagree that she really is the world's fastest regardless of the documentation that comes with her. And, I'll be honest with you all, I'm not in Mallard's favor. Now some of you are thinking, I'm just an ignorant American with a bias, or Mallard cheated because she went downgrade. The latter I'll get to later, but I'm not biased on what country slash nation a locomotive comes from just for something it did. And you know the saying, if there's no evidence, it never happened. Okay, while this is partly true, it's not like I'm trying to prove that the Russians made it to the moon first or Adolf Hitler escaped to South America faking a suicide. But, let's face it, statistically, Mallard isn't the fastest steam locomotive in the world. Let me explain. So as technology progressed throughout the 1900s, so did the designs of steam locomotives and the materials used to manufacture them. Right around the 1930s, a big priority for railroads was to make passenger trains affordable, but retain the luxury, and most of all, speed. To add the cherry on top, locomotives were streamlined to attract the public eye, whether or not the streamlining actually proved to be aerodynamic. In the UK, promoting speed records was also a way of advertising their trains, especially the LNER and the LMS, with their A4s versus the Coronation Scots. Now over here in the United States during the same period, speed records for steam locomotives were not something that we looked upon too much, especially when we were already innovating new diesel-electric streamliners. However, the Milwaukee Road, which coincidentally ended up being LNER's international competitor, was one of the American railroads that liked to set their records official. One of those examples, Milwaukee Road 6402, which I'll be reviewing in the next video, and Milwaukee Road No. 2, which was the first team locomotive to authenticate over 110 miles per hour based on dynamometer car ratings. Number two would hold the world speed record for an entire year until LNER's Silver Jubilee took her on by 0.5 miles per hour. So even in just that little introduction, we can already see that modern steam locomotives are neck and neck in speed, particularly those that were designed for it. But let's just say other steam locomotives around the world built between 1930 and 1950 show some type of superiority in design to the A4, thus making that specific record for that specific locomotive redundant. Many of them are good candidates for breaking the speed record, but all we know is claims. So, why not believe it in an age where it's not City of Churro versus 999? And why haven't we recorded it? World War II. In 1939, Britain, France, Australia, and New Zealand declared war on Germany, the United States following on December 8, 1941. Many American men and young women left the country to defend. During that time, too, the railroad traffic was congested with ammunition, war machines, and, of course, the troops. While the passenger services still continued, the last thing anyone wanted to announce, as it goes for any country, was how fast an engine could go. That would be easy prey for the enemy up above in the sky. Even knowing where a train's destination was pretty much incognito. Here's just a short example from this film. Sir, could you tell me where this train is going? No, sir, sir. That's one thing I'm not allowed to kill. So if that alone was the case, then a speed record would be totally out of the question. So many of these claims and time trials on regularly scheduled trains weren't made public. In the railroad's mentality of the time, if it could do it, then that's how it is. Now, I'll give three examples. Two of them are somewhat documented, 
And then the third one will be just a personal experience, so it's for you to decide. <clears throat> Baron Terval Vouillet, a French railroading expert, wrote a book called Railway Reminiscences of Three Continents. Vouillet kept record of a Chicago to Milwaukee run led by a Milwaukee Road F7464. The train maximized 125 miles per hour for 4.5 miles, but averaged 120. Mind you, that's a flat level grade, unlike Maller that did the same going down grade and almost tearing herself apart. So far, that's the fastest an F7 has ever gone known to anyone who's still alive. Now this next example is a locomotive that makes everyone's blood boil for some odd reason, and I think I know why. Watching some of these guys' videos, which I have commented on as well, is the mecca for debate on the fastest steam locomotive in the world. Enthusiasm for the new T1 project is very apparent, and that's the locomotive I really want to discuss. One of the goals after the new Pennsylvania T1 is built is to break the world speed record for steam locomotives, in this case, shattering mallards. Now, here's the deal. The T1 can, but at the same time, it really can't. Here's why it can. Though the original T1s were very problematic, as far as high maintenance costs and wheel slippage, they were also known to exceed 100 miles per hour regularly, some recorded at over 120, and some witnessed at 140 miles per hour. Now, yes, while that may seem very extreme, let's look at the technical aspects. A 300 PSI boiler, 80 inch drive wheels, roller bearings, poppet valves, four 19 and 3 quarter inch by 26 inch high pressure cylinders, T1s were also known to be free steaming, which they could maintain boiler pressure no matter how wide the throttles open. All these components, and more, can lead to one hell of a thoroughbred. No one really knows how much more successful the T1s could have been for all 52 were scrapped, but with the 5550 rebuild project, which they're supposedly going to fix the kinks in the original design, wouldn't that mean she'd do her ancestors justice for actually proving a T1's true capability? If that's the case, that proves Mallard really wasn't the fastest after all. If you were to put a real T1 next to Mallard or even race them, you'll already see that the T1 has the step up in physical attributes. And now, why the T1 can't. Because the T1's going to be completed just shy of 100 years since Mallard was built, the issue is the steam age has already passed. So, unfortunately, Mallard's record will still remain untouched, but in the case that the 5550 does make the record, she'll prove what her T1 ancestors have already done. So in a way, for both sides, it's a win-lose situation, which I'm completely okay with. While I'm all for the T1 rebuild project and hoping she can support the claims, I'm just glad that we'll have a T1, which is an iconic American steam locomotive, returning. Now this next one is a personal encounter of mine. Back at Steam School 2016, a gentleman came in to examine us on our final test. He was an engineer for the U.S. Army, piloting troop trains. He also specifically mentioned the GS-4 class. He served in World War II, the Cold War, and Korean Wars. One run he told us specifically was when he ran a Chesapeake and Ohio L2A-464, in particular Engine 310 with Franklin B. Poppet valves. He was forced to make up time for the troops had to board a naval vessel. At one point during the run, he looked at the speedometer reading a steady and solid 130 miles per hour. How I wish I would have recorded that or remembered his name for that matter. Now, again, that's for you to decide whether you believe it or not. So, to conclude, was Mallard really the fastest? Absolutely not. There are far more better designs than Mallard ever will be. But, unfortunately, due to several factors, including the war, and the fact nobody was interested in authenticating speeds at the time, the A4's record remains untouched. But, you have to give Mallard, her crew, and her designer some credit. Mallard, during her run, had reached her limit, and melted her center bearing for really trying. It goes to show, when you really set your mind to something, and you really work at it, you can accomplish something huge. You also discover how much you can really take. And for that, I will be fair and congratulate Mallard for setting 126 miles per hour.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that completes episode one of Talk of the Tower. Stay tuned for my next video. But until next time, Baltic 144 Productions, out.